How to save CPU in FL Studio. Hey guys, check out my new song. So you're all probably very familiar with this when the CPU meter goes into the red and your project starts to crack and bug out. It's the worst. But there are plenty of things you can do to prevent this. Some of these tips and tricks I'm about to show you I haven't seen anywhere else. So once again, this is a world first. So let's go. So to start simply off, you should be using an ACO supported device. These are faster and more direct than other devices. If you're using an audio interface, select the ACO device for that interface. Otherwise, just use the FL Studio ACO device. The simplest way to save CPU is to increase the buffer length. The buffer is a small amount of time where FL will smooth out the audio and get rid of pops and clicks. The bigger the buffer, the more successful it will be at doing this. It does mean a time delay of a fraction of a second will occur, which isn't a huge problem unless you're trying to play live with MIDI or record audio, like vocals. It makes me wonder if you had a buffer size of a whole second, how effective it would be at getting rid of all your underruns, but I haven't found out if that's possible. You may as well turn on all these options as they claim to increase CPU performance. Especially the multi-threading options are pretty good. You can also turn down mixer interpolation if you want. I haven't noticed huge differences with this lowered, but maybe you will. Who knows? One of the best ways of instantly cutting down on your CPU usage is by enabling smart disable for your plugins. What happens is, when a certain effect isn't being used, it will turn itself off. This can be for both synths and effects. But what if you want to enable Smart Disable for all your plugins? Ethel has the beautiful option to do just this. In the Tools menu, go to Macro Settings and you'll find this option. If you watched my How to Use Ethel Studio video, I mentioned there are lines, these lines, making so you can click on Tools and then MD and it will quickly enable Smart Disable for you. I use this shortcut very often. In fact, I even use it while playing back. In that way, it works like a kill or background process button. Know that when Smart Disable is enabled, long reverbs and delays will cut out after a few seconds, but this won't be a problem when rendering your track. Even with Smart Disable enabled, I'd still turn off plugins you're not using anymore, because I've still seen CPU come from plugins that are not being used. Another great way of reducing CPU is by lowering your PPQ settings. PPQ stands for Pulse Per Quarter Note. And by default, it's set on 96. Essentially, it controls the amount of resolution you can get out of automation, envelopes, and other settings, not unlike screen resolution. That's why putting this up all the way to maximum allows you to zoom very much further in. But this uses much more CPU power, so setting it all the way down will save CPU. It really does help give you a bit more room to work with, but there are a few things you should be aware of. You won't be able to zoom in as much as before or use extremely super short notes. But if that's okay with you, then it's a pretty good trade-off for more CPU. In the same vein as the PPQ settings, we also have oversampling or quality settings. A lot of synths give you the options to turn oversampling down. Ask yourself, is there really a big difference in sound by turning these settings down? And is it worth it for you? Not only that, but does having a unison of 16 sound much better than 12, 8, or 4? Is it crucial to your sound? Or will it work fine without? Here's an easy trick to apply to your future projects. Use sends or buses to add effects. Most commonly, sends are used for reverbs and delays but they can also be used for choruses and exciters or distortion. Instead of having 10 reverb plugins, which can use quite a bit of CPU, why not send them to one or two reverb sends? Just make sure to turn off the dry signal when using a send, or have it set to 100% wet. 64-bit plugins versus 32-bit plugins. While there reportedly isn't a huge difference between the processing speeds of 64 or 32-bit plugins, you should know when bridging plugins, that's when you open a 32-bit plugin in 64-bit FL Studio or the other way around, it does use a bit more processing power, so try to prevent that if you can. 
Also, in general, bridging plugins just suck. It sucks. It's the worst. When you're working on just the master, you can record a small section of your song into Edison so you can change stuff without worrying about underruns. Now, I call this method fluid freezing. But first, you need to understand what regular normal freezing is. Freezing is the act of turning live generated live synths into an audio file because playing an audio file uses considerably less power than running Serum with 32 voices and God knows what other post processing you have. FL Studio gives you a few options to do the regular method of freezing. There's always recording into Edison, but you also have the ability to render the output of a mixer track. You can even right click this button to name the audio you're about to freeze. I like to set a data folder so all my recorded samples from Edison or the mixer end up in one convenient place. Okay, great. That's how you do the regular type of freezing in FL Studio. And it works. The only thing I don't like is that you make a lot of audio files, and if you want to change something, then you gotta re-record it and delete the old audio files. This is where fluid freezing comes in. Edison has a sync button, meaning it will play back perfectly in sync with your project. Therefore, you can record into Edison turn off that CPU hungry synth and still have the audio playback. Then if you want to change the sound, you can always go back and re-record it. This way you don't have to create a new audio file. That's why I call it fluid freezing. Keep in mind, all this is recorded into your RAM memory. So that comes with the limitations of whatever RAM you have. If you have 200 megabytes of RAM, then I don't advise this technique. If you have 32 gigabytes of RAM, knock yourself out. Go ahead. As you're using Edison in a way it wasn't designed to be used, this does have some flaws. When Edison is in sync, it will play the audio back from the beginning of the project or from the start of a loop. Therefore, if you don't want your audio to begin at the beginning of the project, then you have to insert silence, which also uses more memory. Use the insert key to insert silence. Then you'll have to move the audio to the place you want it to play. The grid in Edison can sync to your project time, making this a lot easier. There. Now Edison will play your audio back where you want it in sync with the project, just like before. This way, you don't have to create any new audio files, and it will play back in sync. I like to use the Edison fluid freezing method. It works well for me. Check your task manager to see if there are things running in the background that you can safely turn off and turn priority to higher real-time and set the affinity to all cores. On the topic of compu computers and cores, you should have your power plan set to high performance. Something I noticed with my laptop was this maximum frequency. I believe it what allows my Intel CPU to make use of its turbo boost. But I also noticed the maximum frequency going down and preventing my CPU from going above that line, kind of like a limiter. I noticed this was happening when a lot of heat was coming from my laptop, usually from trying to play big CPU intensive projects. I solved this by putting blocks under my laptop to give it lift off the table, which greatly reduced the heat around my laptop. Sometimes when I'm not at home though, I'll put things under my laptop like my phone or a book, just something, you know, something to give it lift off the table and give it more airflow. And it does help. But if overheating or the maximum frequency remains a problem, it might be time to open up your laptop and clean the fan. I don't advise anybody doing this, but I was amazed at the amount of dust stuff in my fan. And afterwards, it was a, a night and day difference. So that was my comprehensive list of all CPU tricks. Some of them will be more handy than others, but I think they're all worth testing out and see if they work for you. Now, go forth, my children and create some more dank beats. <laughs>